So I'm Doug Miller here in Montreal with the Canadian Anti-Apartheid Activist History Project with um, Fiona Bishop in, I believe, Regina, yes. Saskatchewan. And uh, Fiona is, has uh, agreed to be part of the interviews on behalf of the SAC2 Solidarity Committee, also present in this interview with Ken Lukart and Jane Armstrong in Toronto. So good morning, Fiona. Welcome to this enterprise. It's been a lot of fun to meet all the people that are involved, uh, have been involved, and are still showing such an amazing interest and recollection of all things related. Um, I, I sent you a consent form. I, I hope you had a chance to read it and you understand where we, we could be using this for public presentations or for research purposes. It'll be stored and archived and hopefully made accessible through a, a beautiful website whenever we get managed to get those skills together. So do you uh, consent to do this interview for us? Yeah. Thank you so yes. much. Thank you. Yes. So uh, Fiona, the, the, the first question is generally just, could you give us a little bit of background, like where you're from and how you got involved uh, with anti-apartheid or apartheid work or how you learned about it and, and also your union background that connected you to SACTU? Okay, well, um, I was, uh, let's see, I'm from Regina originally, but I was working in Vancouver and then for years and came back uh, to Regina to go to university and I think that's where it all started at university uh, finding out you know all all the social issues and, and things like that I was um, I think I belong to SCAR for the Saskatchewan Coalition Against Racism in the late 70s perhaps no no I'm sorry late um late early 70s, early 70s. I'm, my dates are a little fuzzy here. Early 70s. And um, then at the university, uh, I must have heard about, you know, the anti-apartheid movement. I just can't, can't recall because it was all kind of meshed together. Um, at the same time, I was also involved in Saskatchewan Working Women and I was a childcare activist. So it was very busy times. But as I was saying to Jane a few minutes earlier, a lot of it overlapped, um, a lot of the issues, and I actually would tie them all together. So when I worked for the, I worked for the government first as a researcher, and then, then um, got recruited into working for the union, for Saskatchewan Government Employees Union. And um, it was a good connection for all the community work through SCAR. Uh, because it just kind of, everything kind of overlapped. So um, I got involved with the, the anti-apartheid movement and um, I probably through the two Kens, uh, they came across Canada often and um, we'd meet in small groups and I learned, I guess on most of it through um, Ken Lucart, who's on the air now and um, Ken Trainer, they came through. Yeah, so that was the start of it all, I believe. Is that good enough? <laughs> I was Not a researcher it. for SGU and also uh, uh, the equity person. I, I formed a Indigenous uh, committee. It was the first one in Canada, I think, called FAIR. And um, because we have a lot of Indigenous uh, members, SGU members. Up, especially up north, and um, I'd, I'd have I'd be the human rights staffer as well, and I would bring in Ken and a few others to talk about the, the issues uh, as we went along. And there was a lot of overlap between the issues between the um, say ur uranium mining up north and in in uh, Namibia, and so you know everything kind of overlapped all the issues in the north. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. So so the, the union you were a member of was what again? Uh, well, I was a staff, well, I was a member first for Saskatchewan Government Employees Union. Then I was a staffer for, for SGU and we were CLC Local 41 staff. So actually 41 was very supportive and a lot of these issues would send me to different forums. Um, the union was a little slow to 
move on these issues. But, um, you know, they were in, in the early days were very good. But then I think like across Canada, the jail guards to, kind of took over a lot of the unions and uh, it was more difficult then. <laughs> yeah. But especially for, um, for the work I did on uh, equity issues. So it was, um, yeah, it was troubling times. Actually, in the 90s, we had this, I don't want to go off too far on, a, on uh, you know, out of top, off topic, but um, in 1990, uh, Leo Lachance, a native trapper up north, was uh, killed in a gun shop owned by a white supremacist, the Aryan Nations, up in Prince Albert. And three of the... Um, people in the gun shop at the time were on the executive of the union. So that kind of gives you a hint of what I was dealing with. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. That's a, a huge sweep of history there. That's a lot. Can we go, go back to the, the... Yeah, I'm sorry. Just Oh, no, that's great. That's wonderful. Uh, it gives us a good picture of, uh, of what you were involved in. And wow, <laughs> what, a, what a CV there. Um, so, so you, you first met the, the SACTU people when you were already a staffer of the, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Saskatchewan Government Employees Union? Yes, I believe so. Ken might be able to correct me on that, but uh, I, I think I was staff yeah. then, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so do you remember what kind of things uh, you, you, were, you were working with the SACTU people on? Oh, yes. Well, mostly just getting the, ed you know, the education work done on um, why it was so important to fight apartheid in South Africa. And um, I can remember uh, taking a lot of resolutions to um, through all the conventions through um, through my local first to get support at the staff local and then um, get it through SGU and then the Saskatchewan Federation of Labor because I was on that human rights committee too. So yeah, it was a lot of work, education work at that time uh, to move the issues forward. And then of course, back then, um, Saskatchewan, uh, the government owned all the liquor stores. They weren't allowed, you know, I mean, hotels, there was some off sale and stuff, but basically all the liquor stores in the province were owned uh, by the government. So they were SGU members. So that was a good in, to uh, talk to the, I can remember meeting with the, the members of uh, the executive and that of the liquor board, um, so, you know, the SGU members and the liquor board and, you know, going through the whole explanation of, well, if we start picketing out in front, don't take this personally, you know, <laughs> it's not about you and we want your support. And, and so we actually did get their support and we're, um, we're able to get, uh, you know, the, South African wines and liquors, this hot cargo, and they took them all off the shelf. So I don't know where that happened um, in the rest of the country, but certainly in Saskatchewan, because it was such a you know small province, right? But still, we were able to do the education work and get that done. So that was pretty major. I wow, remember that is major, yeah. Ken Trainer talking about that once, but again, I'm a little fuzzy on the dates. I remember there was a big conference in Regina with a, a lot of South African activists came to Saskatchewan. It was, oh, I'm trying to think of the title of it, getting something together. Oh, I just can't remember. Anyways, the university brought a lot of people in. And during the break, I can remember uh, at lunch, we all marched over a couple blocks away to the front of the liquor store and, you know, we're picketing. And this one fellow who's president of the, of the, uh, of the liquor board employees came out and said, <laughs> he started yelling at me, see, you know, he's, he was quite a character, yelling at me saying, what are you following me around? You were just at this other liquor store and now, now you're here. And I said, <laughs> you know, and everybody was a little worried that he was mad and he was just his character. He wasn't, he was just laugh. I laughed and said, oh, you know, you're, you're fine. You know, we're just here for a while, about an hour and we have to go back. So, you know, <laughs> so they, he met, you know, I brought a few of the, the staff out and they met some of the people on that were doing the information picket from, and actually there was some from South Africa. So it was kind of neat for them to meet them, you know, and they, they, they talked about how, support, you know, thankful they were for the boy, you know, the boycott and that. Yeah. 
Tremendous. Yeah, anyway, so that was one story. <laughs> Good. And, and um, Jane, do you have anything to query here? I, no, but this is tri uh, triggering some memories of people that were in involved in Regina. And yeah. I think one fellow ended up actually going on to be a reporter with the local Regina CBC station. Uh, anyway, I can I can see him, but I can't remember his name. But I think he was in, involved in that conference that you're talking about. Okay. Uh, Getting the real story out, out or something like that. Yeah. Sorry, I can't quite remember that. And it was a coalition. Yeah. Weren't some of the churches involved in Regina as well? Oh, yeah. Likely, yes. And uh, we had uh, Keith Philander was from South African and so called colored group. And um, he was, you know, very active. He was an excellent speaker. Remember him? You know, and a lot of the rallies would speak yes. and stuff. Yes. And um, his, his uh, at the time, his wife, Helen Campbell, was president of the local uh, solidarity committee. And um, I was kind of the connection to all the unions. And uh, um, there was a George Manns, who was the editor of Briar Patch magazine, so he would often put articles in there about, you know, all the issues, which was really good. And uh, I'm just trying, there weren't that many of us, really, you know, I mean, there were a few key people in um, each of the major unions that were supportive. See, I, mean, I can't remember when we first met you, but I do remember on one of the first trips I went out to Saskatchewan. That's the first connection. And I also want to say that SGE, SGEU support for Saskatchewan was always solid. We knew that. Yes. So we could come to you, especially you, and ask for it to be brought in. And that, in that respect, I want to point out that there was a very unique situation in the prairies that didn't happen anywhere else in Canada that I know of. Four unions got together to work jointly on international issues. SGEU, QP, uh, RSDWU, Retail Wholesale Department Store Union, and Crane Services. And they put together yes. a coalition of activists from each union, leaders and activists, that would work jointly on a particular issue, whether it be Nicaragua, South Africa, whatever, and that was unique. Can you tell us a bit about how that came into being? Uh, yes, actually we were sort of, well, in those days, the establishment and the unions were pretty right wing and uh, the CLC officially didn't support the anti-apartheid uh, struggle because they supported the, the legitimate unions in each country, right, which definitely wasn't going to be SACTU, which was banned, you know, way back. And um, uh, so there were, yeah, it was RWDSU, it was, it was the initials, yeah, and the Grain Services, so there's Hugh Wagner, Grain Services, and, and um, QB, I can't remember, anyways, you're right, it's four units, so the four units used to get together on all sort of generally say the progressive issues at the SFL uh, convention, Saskatchewan Federation of Labour conventions, and we would all talk about the issues and we'd kind of spread things out about who was doing what, you know, and for the resolutions and getting support and all that stuff at that, the, all of our, our own conventions, as well as the SFL. So that's kind of how it started. And then, um, uh, yeah, so I, you know, each, each um, kind of group took on, you know, or individuals in these, in this kind of group, lefty group, <laughs> uh, took on different aspects and the one that was major was um was in Mozambique the Mozambique project right yeah and that was yes. a big one and of course support for Nicaragua yeah hmm. sorry would that ahead. have been where Michael Murphy was involved as well was with Mozambique I, I'm sorry I don't know okay. that name he, yeah but how about yeah, sorry. Did you, did you, one trip sorry. go ahead did Doug. you did you know Brian Krempian or Don Cossack for that Mozambique? Oh, uh, so Sir Cossack and I are, and his, his wife Denise Curry are, were very close. Yes, we worked on a lot of issues okay. together. Yes, right. yeah. So we had connections. I mean, like I say, it's 
it's not that many in this <laughs> province. So if you were active in something, you soon found out everybody else who was, right? The trip I remember most important so was a, for me, at least in that, that those years was the trip to Prince Albert, where, where I think it was a conference of, of the yes. unions or a meeting of those unions. And you especially made it possible to meet Ron, Ron Bourgeau, who was a first oh, yes, an indigenous course. student of law at that time. Yes. And he had done some fairly amazing investigation about the historical connections between the white regime in South Africa back in 1948, looking at Canada as a source of ideas about how apartheid could be better established in South Africa. Can you tell me yes. or us your re recollection of the connection with Ron? Sure, and it goes back to SCAR again, the Saskatchewan Coalition Against Racism. We were both on the board and um, he was, uh, uh, teaching at the university, and uh, I think it was mostly through through SCAR because I used to bring all you guys into all the human rights conferences and the and the SFL conventions. Uh, I'm, yeah, SFL and the SU conventions to speak right on the issues, and Kosick, um was yeah very involved in the Mozambique project, right? Yeah. So I'm sorry. What was the question again? <laughs> Ron Bougeau. Yes, Ron. I'm sorry, Ron. Of course. I slipped my mind for a moment. Yes, so Ron actually is, has a lot of published work in, in Briar Patch and other magazine, uh, Canadian Dimension, on this very issue. And he linked the reserve system in Canada to what they started at, at the, um, in South Africa, right? That's where they got the idea from, unfortunately. And uh, so he has, he's, has a lot of uh, published work on the issue and is very, very uh, uh, solid on this. Uh, so if you ever have a chance to read any of his, his work, it's, uh, it's really thorough and very good. And he's actually a Métis uh, from up north, North Malford. Yeah, I made contact. And he when was we started also... this project, I made contact with him. He sent me the materials he had written. So yeah. it was very, very helpful. Very, yes, yeah. very important for people to appreciate that South Africa had a lot to do with Canada and vice versa. Yes, yes, and not in such a great way, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. So he's at, he's just actually retired a couple of years ago and he's still, he's still doing a major work on all, all that, the historical issues. He was a, you know, a Métis historian and he was just excellent. Yeah. Yes. You mentioned number names. Bill Robb come to mind. Was Bill involved in this? Bill Robb was uh, worked at the time worked for the Saskatchewan International Labor Project. So, right. yep. And he's he's the one that um, organized or got the funding for us uh, about ten of us, I think, to go to uh, South Africa to meet everybody in 1990. Just it was an exciting time. Just when Mandela was released, and we uh, we went to the first uh, let me see African National Congress um, consultative conference, the first one since yeah. they were on band. Just met, uh, just heard everybody speak. Mandela opened it up, and then it was interesting because the in inside the the country the. Um, the ANC youth with Chris Haney were very, very solid and very active. That was just before he was killed. And, um, you know, we met all of them. Yeah, it was amazing. We were just at the, happened to come back, a few of us, four of us came back from Cape Town into Joburg just when Oliver Tombo was arriving at the airport. And we had, I was with uh, Sticks. Um, Banks, and, yeah, baffled, yeah, and um, I was with him, and we had to get over the big, like we just got off the um, off the plane, and we knew something was happening. So of course he checked it out, and and um, we had to jump across these barriers to get you know with the other Africans to meet Oliver Tombo, and it was just like such a division between the white, and they had the the dogs out and everything. So of course because I was white, they left the dogs left me alone, but the sticks had to really you know, work around, getting around over into the crowd. And we got in there and all of a sudden there's Peter Mishlangu. 
I got up beside him and said, hey, hey what's happening? You know, <laughs> so it was it was a really wow. interesting times. Yeah. But that's when um, when sticks got arrested in Port Elizabeth and we had to work really hard to get them out of jail. You know, there was the exiles were supposed to be it was OK for them to come back in the country at that moment. But it wasn't really so. Yeah, they, the South African police followed us around all the time. They were very obvious. <laughs> we had to sneak around at night, you know, because, yeah, we had, um, when we went to um, a township outside of, uh, I'm just trying to think, uh, Cape Town, uh, I can remember we had to sneak in at night and be really careful because, you know, we're the only whites there. <laughs> there were a few of us. And it was, um, we met the, it was just before the consultative conference and the fellow we met that we signed us up for the ANC membership. Oh, got my card. <laughs> um, <laughs> he, yeah, still got it. Anyways, uh, he, he met, I saw him in at the consultative co conference, you know, so it, so it was, it just uh, was really quite, it was exciting times that, that part. But Can before you tell us that, on that delegation with the bar by who else was on the delegation? Um, Barb? Walter, Walter Aberley from, from um, Grain Services Union, because they went, Byers and him and a couple others went to Mozambique, of course, to follow up in the health and safety project there at the time. And uh, I went with Styx and Bill Robb and Kevin Flat, Flay, 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 Flay. sorry. Kevin he was Flay, yeah. Yeah, sorry. And um, if we went to Cape Town and, and we went to Namibia, I'm sorry, to Namibia. Yeah. So uh, it was it was a really quite interesting times there to meet everybody. Yeah, I, I met uh, Oliver Tombo. After Styx was arrested, um, I went to the ANC office, to, you know, to try and get some help there. And uh, they only let me in because I was with in oh, I was with Sticks the other day, and I'd signed in. You know, it was very much security stuff happening there. And uh, we went in. The, they opened the elevator. I think Byers came with me, and Walter. Yeah, and they opened the elevator, and there was Oliver Tombo. And Byers still teases me, saying that it's the only time she'd seen me tongue-tied. I couldn't talk. They didn't know who he was, and I just went, "Oh my word!" <laughs> yeah. Wow. So it was um. And he, he actually was very, um, very aware of the Canadian anti-apartheid network and the support from the activists in Canada. He talked about it, actually, because I said we we're from Canada, you know, and he introduced them and said what the problem was, was sticks being arrested. So they, he got out and that was good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I'm kind of, I know I'm sorry, I'm all, no, I'm kind of all over the place, but it's um, hard to remember everything. <laughs> Well, no, it's it's it's, uh, and of course, uh, given given the length of time in between, it's quite normal that we would be straining for some of this. <laughs> but at the same time, that was a very pivotal yeah. moment in South African history that you were there. Yes. So no wonder yes. it left a big impression because all those yeah. people coming together and all those events happening the way they did, it was very very special, and yeah. tender or delicate or whatever the right word yes. is. Yes, that too. Yeah, yeah. Um. Uh, Ken, back to the SACTU solidarity and the relations with uh, Saskatchewan. Uh, what else can you help us recall here? Well, I remember the support for the strike fund was very substantial. And yes. we, have, we have found a list you know, of all the unions and locals that oh. contributed to the strike fund. Certainly SGU and QP and you know, that group of four unions were very supportive. And Education Works. Yeah, I remember when you introduced me to Ron Bourgeois and I went, a couple of beers at the local pub, and it was just great. That, those kinds of connections don't happen by chance. That's no. the point I make. You know, it requires people who know what they're doing, knows who should know who else, who should know who. Yeah. So that, that that work that we did with you and four unions, I think, is amongst the best examples that we could come up with across the country. You know, we, oh, knew, we always had the CAW and postal workers, support, but some of those things that we did with your your groups. We're quite unique. Well, yeah. And was it was that project in South Africa ever written up? The the, the slip project. Do you have any documentation on that, or was it was there a report when you came back? Yes, yes, actually there was. I think Bill Robb would have it. We, we are he, collecting as many documents as we can, so that might, might be something that 
Jane has been doing a lot of the retrieval work on that front. Oh. I look for because that shows the people we worked with in the unions were involved beyond just the union solidarity here in Canada. They actually went to South Africa participated in events there in 1990 that would be useful yes yes we have and a few of them that did some went that went you know the union sent and they actually weren't um it, it was too bad that that somebody like glenn mcahonic didn't go from qp because yeah. he was so solid but he thought he should send somebody else from qp you know and the same thing with su it yeah it was unfortunate i mean they they certainly learned a lot they they were there, but there was only a handful of us that had really, uh, you know, done all the work that, um, yeah. But, you know, it was, um, they did uh, fund it and did send it, 41 sent me, not SGU, so yeah, yeah. So that was um, really good, but Bill Robb would have that final report because it was through the SILK project, the International Labor Program. So that is uh, uh, written up and we had all kinds of, Kevin used to take photos all over the place and you know, we've got a poster and all that stuff that somebody I probably have a copy of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there was well, a lot of that. Um, we made our first deposit to the Library and Archives Canada last December. And okay. uh, we found, do you remember those orange, big orange newsletters, uh, the SACTU yeah. newsletters? Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We found all of those in both French and English to send original mm -hmm. copies to the archives. Um, a fair amount of documentation because we only began a little over a year ago deciding that if we didn't do it's it, time. Now, it wasn't gonna happen yeah. and that history would be lost because it's in people's minds. Uh, yes. And as we go, so does that history. So that was the impetus for this. But one of the things we are looking for continuing to look for are what Ken raised, uh, any kind of uh, documentation, even photocopies of it, because you know these documents may belong to somebody else or somebody else's archive, um, but also uh, photographs of uh, any, you know, any of the events in front of say the liquor stores or anything else. We didn't take pictures back then. Oh, the way we didn't, we didn't. now unfortunately but uh, we have found about 40 to 50 uh images so far and we did deposit a number of uh posters uh that we've managed to recover the originals uh and this the small sack to pins etc oh yeah yes, so okay. if you do uh if you do uncover in boxes stored in a basement or an attic or something uh some photos yeah. even to send yeah oh i lost you uh you know but not having any uh but the archives in particular prefer uh you know original photographs yeah. etc uh but they're uh, also deeply interested in this oral history. Uh, they were mm -hmm. very encouraging when we sent the first couple, uh, the archivists that we're working with has been extremely uh, supportive of continuing to do the oral histories. Uh, oh, good. Yeah. I'm so glad that we were able to connect with you and this has been fascinating. Well, there's so much I'm just, I feel like I'm just scratching the surface of what I remember. I know as soon as this is over, I'll go, oh, I should have talked about this or that. Because <laughs> it was, like I say, it was very busy times. Yeah, we used to actually, our home in Regina was officially called the A&C home. Everybody that came through stayed there, Styx and Peter and, you know, pretty much everybody because it was sort of a safe place for them to be, yeah. And we'd have meetings at you know my place all the time. Everybody would come over. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember that. Yeah. I think I even stayed there myself once. Not that I was on the sticks, or I, I think I yeah. did. Yeah, if, probably. If, if you think of more people, or if you come across anything, make sure you contact us so we can add that to our project. Yeah. I'm, I'm and, thinking you're provoking a number of names in my head. Uh, who was yeah. the woman on staff with Crane Services that did? A lot of that Southern African work. You, Pearson, Bonnie oh. Pearson. Bonnie Pearson. Oh, oh, Bonnie. Yeah, she's in BC now. Has been for years. 
Yeah, okay. I forgot. Yeah. I'm trying to think of other people we may want to contact from the prairies. Uh, oh, well, are you, I'm sure you've contacted Don, have you? Cossack and... and I, I, he's on my list. I've I've talked with uh, Mike Murphy though. We for, uh, but they weren't part of this union aspect, and uh, the Saktu yeah. unions aspect has sort of uh, has sort of uh, taken precedence right now. Uh, yes. But we've got yeah. to get back to all those other yeah. and groups we have that we're connected. Uh, we've connected with Bill Robb, um, yeah. and uh, he was going to try and. Uh, gather together some of the people who worked on silp uh for september i can't remember he was booked up with something some other project he was working yeah. for the summer but uh we need to get back in touch with him in september but yeah we trying to track down where the the documents were from that I time know. in the 1980s i think uh actually buyers at, at her office had all the photos that um, Kevin took on that uh, 1990 uh, labor union tour to South Africa. So I don't, I have no idea. Maybe it's still in the SFL office, who knows? You know, there's, oh, that, that was for photos. It was just, he was quite a photographer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you guys had a reunion uh, a couple yeah. of years ago. Or just last year or something. Yeah. Maybe it was shortly. Yeah, it wasn't too long ago. Yes, and we did a, a Zoom thing. Yeah, and all caught up on <laughs> on everything. Yeah, because that was a, that was a pretty big uh, trip. Well, we I think it was just because of the timing of it. You know, it, it was in South Africa. It was very exciting. Yeah, at that time. And you then, know, there was a South African professor at the University of Regina. I think he was either Indian South African or so-called colored South African. Do you recall who that was? I would meet him occasionally at conferences. In Regina? Yeah, I'm oh. quite sure. Oh, um, okay. I'm sorry, it's not coming to me at the moment. Yeah. He oh. was very supportive, even though he wasn't in the labor movement. He was very supportive yes. of what we were doing. Well, it was a small network. We used to meet, you know, Manitoba and, um, and Saskatchewan people. There was a fellow, uh, maybe you were talking about, he was in education. Reedy, Reddy, his name was up in in the northern Manitoba. Yes, he was. Is that, yeah, I don't. Know. Anyways, it was um, yeah, it was very busy times. I recall, yeah. But you came several times. I brought you in, didn't I, to for human yeah. rights conferences and and uh, yeah, and SGU conferences to talk about these issues. Yeah, yeah, we and Ron did too. And the sack do I can remember always uh, the fundraising, passing the hat. I'd always get up and say, <laughs> so nobody could say no. You just get up and say, okay, <laughs> after you'd speak or somebody was, you know, Peter or, or Stick spoke, then, um, you know, we'd go pass the hat for the fundraising issues. And yeah, it was, it was good times. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. Well, uh, um, uh, Ken, Jane, uh, we covered the ground here? I think so. Oh, I think so. And don't hesitate, Fiona, if you, you know, want to uh, get interviewed again because you begin oh, to remember more detail as time goes on. Or uh, Bill Robb may get in touch with you uh, as well in the fall uh, yeah. to do some kind of group thing at some point, too. Okay. Well, if, you think, yep. if you think of other people that you think we should be in touch yeah. with, because you know, we don't have a, a long list in the prairies, and I think yeah. we want to show that breadth across the country. So anybody right. else yeah. you can I, think of. I tried them. getting in touch with Barb uh, Byers. I sent her two or three emails in the winter, uh, but didn't get a response. I know where she's living now, where she retired over near uh, 25th and Albert there in that area. And... Uh, and I thought, I hope she was just busy because, you know, we used to connect periodically over the years. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, uh, she certainly was incredibly active uh, over the years. Well, 
with with yes. with that, I, I Fiona, I, I want to thank you very much for this. And thank and you. don't don't underestimate the how important. I mean, even people staying at your home is a tremendous reflection of the kind of solidarity that was there uh, for uh, for this kind of activity. And and the trip to South Africa, I think you were as important to them being there as it was for you to get energy from it. Uh, that the white South Africa had to know that they stood alone in the world with their racism on that issue. So uh, yes. you were there yeah. to be exemplify that for uh, for us. So uh, thank yeah. you so much Thanks. for all that. Okay. And with I that, just I, okay. I, I'm sorry. Just remember the other thing when when um, the South African ambassador Bob. Was uh, his name? Yeah. Bab, yeah. yeah, came Bab. through. We had, we had a big demonstration at the university, and uh, he they he was in the journalism department, and they were trying to be objective or whatever. And uh, so they brought him in, and I can remember we <laughs> we were pounding on the wall. So many of us were pounding on the wall so hard, and in, in the at, in that room they were in that he couldn't even speak. It was so loud. <laughs> <laughs> but he but also the. The connection with a lot of the indigenous groups in in um, uh, you know we work very closely through SAC, uh, through SCAR with a lot of indigenous groups and you know was it always really interesting to make those connections when we bring somebody in like it mostly sticks at the time we'd meet with SCAR and they were mostly indigenous people on on that um, the board and that and they they were also very um, you know, it, it was just really good learning and all that, the connections for especially the Indigenous people to learn what the issues were in South Africa and vice versa. And we had, um, uh, I, I'm just trying to remember some forum we had with that. Oh, I sorry, I can't think of it right now, but I know that there were a lot of um, good connections there for, you know, broadening the issues. Ron Bergeau, of course, would be involved in that. And, uh, is he retired you know, in Regina? Does he live in Regina? Yes. Yes, he is. Yeah, yeah. So um, he's. I have his, um, you know, his phone number. I still keep in contact with him and some of the others. Well, I think of making contact with him too. Yeah. Yes. Oh, for sure. He'd be good to speak to. Yeah. Yeah. Great and, to uh, see you. Thanks so much. Yeah. No. Us. Good. Good to see you. Yeah. All right. Okay. So. Thanks yeah. again. Yeah, and you're we'll, welcome. We'll keep in touch because there's lots more to talk about, I'm sure. I'm sure there is. Yeah. Okay. Nice to meet you. Okay. Nice to meet you. Thank Bye. you so much. What a pleasure. You're welcome. Thanks. Bye so, now. Yeah, I'm just going to turn the recording.